Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. All right, today I'm going to do uh, going to do a video on the possibility of carrying one concept that has multiple tags rather than carrying multiple concepts in your uh, drop back passing game. Remember to check out some of our sponsors, Game Strats, the sideline replay system that we use. All right, Difference USA is an ultimate striking machine that we use in the off season to work on our hand placement and our striking. Defensive Coordinator One is an in-game app that lets you make critical in-game adjustments based on live in-game data. Just Play Football is the diagram tool that I use to draw plays for webinars or clinics. And then Dome Hats is our uh, major sponsor on our Play Fast Football uh, brand and they are the creators of this hat and all the hats that I use with my football program. So check out Dome Hats. Alright, so you know this season we carried in our drop back passing game we carried mesh, we carried curl flat, we carried Y sail, we carried four verts, and then we carried three man snag. All right, and at the end of the season, after looking at all of our at, at all of our statistics and analyzing what we do and how we do it, I realized that we were only calling nine to ten drop back passes a game. So if I'm only calling nine to ten drop back passes a game, do I really need to carry five drop back passing schemes? And then when I go back and I look at the results of those things, and I find out how often I actually call them in games, what we were actually calling, and then the success that, with that we were having, I started to think about what if I kind of limited what we carried down to maybe one or two concepts, but they're concepts that can have multiple tags that within that concept you can attack a varying degree of defenses. Because let's face it, as an offensive coach or an offensive coordinator, why do you carry so much in your offense? Because you always want to have answers. You always want to feel like no matter what the defense does, you have answers. And offensive coaches usually like to feel like if they have the marker last, I can diagram a play or by nature I can call a play All right, that makes me feel like I outdid that defensive coordinator or I won up that, other, that guy on the other sideline. When in reality, is it's the result of the play that actually makes the play call itself a good or a bad call. I've talked about this in other videos. I've discussed this with other coaches. When you call a play, the result of the play in reality makes it a good or a bad call. And you can look at this a couple different ways. If you call a run play into a loaded box, and that run play, whether it be whether they miss a tackle, fit it wrong, or your kid breaks a tackle, or whatever the case may be, if you call a run play into a loaded box and it goes for 35 yards, technically that's a good play call. Now, when you go back and look at it as a coordinator, you can probably look at it and say, well, that wasn't a very good call versus that defense. But the result of the play made it a good call. You can have a call that you feel like when you, you call a run to a five-man box and you miss one or two blocks or you don't get something executed and the play goes for no yards or maybe you, you, know, you, you have a problem with the exchange or something goes on to where maybe there's a penetration in the backfield and... That run play versus a five-man box goes for no gain or, or negative. At the end of the day, that technically is a bad play call. So you can analyze it and sit there and say, well, I call a run to a five-man box. We've got numbers. We've got everything that we want. That was a good play call. Well, yeah, maybe on paper it was a good play call. In theory, it was a good play call. But the result of the play makes it a bad play call. So that's how I kind of look at things. The result of the play at the end of the day is what makes a good or a bad play call. Now, as a play caller myself, I'm always going to look back and say, well, that was stupid, shouldn't have done that, that was really good there, that should have worked there, or that was a good call for that situation. But really, it's the result of the play that makes the play call. So, as an offensive coordinator, do I really need to have five or six different drop back theories that I'm carrying if I'm not going to call them all in games, if I'm only going to call nine or ten drop back passes, do our kids really understand all those theories? Does our quarterback understand all of those theories? Do the wide receivers understand the differences in the theories and the routes and the depths and the landmarks? You know, are we able to teach all those things to the kids effectively so that we can run them all? Or should we just stick with maybe one or two concepts or one base concept that we can put multiple tags to? The kids learn it as one concept and then maybe one receiver gets a tag and then the quarterback learns how that tag changes the progression or it changes what we're trying to do against a certain coverage, is that enough to have one concept with tags that can beat multiple defenses? All right, so what I'm going to look at is, is for me, one of my favorite concepts, which is three-man snap. Okay, so we're going to run, 
All right, right now I've got it drawn up out of two by two. You can do it out of two back if you're worried about protection or if you don't like, uh, you know, double reading or throwing hot off of a fifth rusher, depending on which way you turn the center. All right, you can use two backs if you'd like to. Right now I've got it drawn up out of two by two because part of the tags that I'm going to build in are going to be a backside tag for pattern matching defenses to read away from the mic. So we've got the corner out by number two, we've got the snag route by number one, we've got the back push flat, we've got it mirrored on the backside. The reason I mirror it on the backside is because I want the corner route to occupy a safety because I have some tags that I want to get to that affect middle of the field open. Okay, so we start with this, all right, as a base theory, and our quarterbacks understand that we're always going to peak the corner first, and based on coverage, if we get some type of man look or maybe uh, a, a man free look or something where there's a safety closed in the middle of the field, but we're getting grass out here, all right, to where we need to work the corner out, obviously we want to throw the corner out, all right? In reality for us, when we call three-man snag, we rarely end up throwing the corner out just because of how teams play us on defense. So it naturally progresses right down to, all right, an east-west read on that overhang defender with the snag sitting there and the back pushed outside of that. All right, so it starts in theory as that triangle read kind of peaking, all right, up top of the corner, then coming down to the inside, outside, east-west read, all right, on that uh, overhang backer, the leverage of that overhang backer, and, and we start off with that theory, Okay. If we get a middle of the field open team, all right, and we want to work middle of the field open, one tag, all right, to the corner route can get us to run the shake route, which puts us on the corner post, which now attacks middle of the field open. All right, so by mirroring it on the backside and running the corner route versus two higher pattern match teams that play too high middle of the field open, I'm hoping to get this backside safety out of the equation so I can attack the middle of the field. All right, so the first tag that I could go to would be to attack the middle of the field with the shake route by number two, okay? If they're a middle of the field open team, that's a hard pattern match defense that pushes backers to match underneath routes, okay? The next tag I can get to, all right, is I can run the snag and go, or we call it wiggle, all right, to where we run the snag and then we burst the snag route down the middle of the field because the pattern matching teams if they push the Sam and they push the Mike, the Mike ends up being the guy that has to relate to that new number three. And with the middle of the field open, when that new number three goes vertical, now you get the snag route on the Mike. All right, so it's kind of like a nod theory if you want to look at it that way. A burst theory, all right, snag and go. We call it wiggle. We just make a wiggle tag. Okay, so right there we've already got two built-in tags to, to attack middle of the field open. Okay, middle of the field open so that we can attack if the middle of the field is open and we like our matchup with our number two on their safety. If we like them pattern matching and pushing the mic, all right, to relate to the new number three or the final number three, and we can get the mic on our number one receiver on a snag and go. Okay, we like that. If we get a team that pushes their backers like we just described and we want it have the quarterback work backside off the push, we can run a levels theory on the backside with the 10 yard dig and the five yard fin. So now we read, okay, the push of the Mike and the Sam. So if we know that they are gonna push and push, now when the Mike pushes front side, we get a high low two on one. All right, hopefully if we've got the coverages figured out right and they're playing that structure on the backside, all right, and they're not playing a lock or a man structure on the backside. They're trying to play a pattern match to both sides. All right, now when the Mike and the Sam push, the Mike pushes quarterback on a tag, can go backside away from the Mike, and now we have a tag to the backside to throw away, all right, from the push. All right, we have also toyed with the idea because. I like the concept in, in uh, versus a middle of the field open pattern match team. We've toyed with the idea of running backside, all right, cross, similar to a Y cross theory, all right, where we now take the backside two and we run him on a Y cross so that if the front side is pattern match and the safety takes two vertical and he vacates there, all right, and they push the Sam and the Mike to the new number three in the back in the flat. All right, we have toyed with the idea of running Y cross as a backside tag to now get, all right, our, our Y, this would be 
our Y or our H, our slot, across the field into that vacated area trying to find grass, all right, because the middle of the field is open. So now we've toyed with the idea of running the cross route from the backside, so now we're actually getting some of the things that we like, the best of both worlds, where we have three-man snag on the front side, but we have that, all right, kind of vertical philosophy with that cross route, all right, going across the field. Okay, and then if we get teams that want to play one high, all right, so if we get teams that for whatever reason want to play us, all right, in, in some version of one high, with the weak safety spun down, leaving six in the box to play you in some version of rip Liz, pattern match, if they want to play pattern match, or just country cover three, all right. Now what we like to do is we like to tag the front side and make it a spacing concept. So we tag spot, and now instead of running snag corner flat, we run snag spot flat, all right, swing. Still run the normal snag on the back side, and now if it's a one high structure, all right, and, and we feel like they've only have, they only have these two underneath defenders to match, all right, the patterns because the corner is an all third player, all right, now we feel like we've got a three on two situation where we've got a snag, a spot, and a push flat so that if the Mike and the Sam try to push, we've got two underneath routes to make it a spacing concept with a guy attacking the flat as well, okay, if... If it were a man-free concept and we felt like we were getting one high, all right, and more man-free in, in structure, all right, so maybe we were getting more of a man-free concept, okay, depending on the levels of the man players, we can give ourselves a rub route to where we can tag the number two and we can go snag, wheel, all right, the wheel route ends up in the same spot that the corner would end up. So to the quarterback, it ends up being the same type throw. But now we're doing it with snag, wheel, flat, okay? We're going to end up with the route in the same spot that the corner would end up. We're just getting to it a different way, and we're trying to rub the man players, all right, to give us a man beat or a red, maybe a red zone player or a short yardage player if we're getting a lot of man-to-man -man within the same concept. Now we have a tag to make it, okay, a, a man beat. All right, so we take the base three-man snag, we take the base philosophy, and we add a couple tags to where we can attack the middle of the field with the slot, we can attack the middle of the field with the burst or wiggle snag and go, we can attack the backside off the pattern match by tagging the backside in routes, okay, we can attack man-to-man -man coverage by tagging a wheel and making a rub on the front side, and we can attack one high or three deep structures to where we make it a spacing concept. And now we've got a spot, a snag, and a flat route. So within one concept, while teaching multiple tags, we now have the ability to attack several different coverages. And as an offensive coordinator or a play caller, feel like you have answers built in. Even though you don't have five or six different drop back theories, you have answers built in to attack different coverages. Because at the end of the day, the question you always have to ask yourself as an offensive coordinator, if a team plays a certain defense, do I need five ways to beat that defense? Or do I really just need one or two ways executed to the best of our ability? All right, and, and what usually ends up happening is as a play caller, you want more ways to attack. Well, the more ways that you have to attack are the more things that your kids have to master or the more techniques and, and routes and reads or things that they have to learn and execute. So at the end of the day, if you have a certain coverage structure, whether it's man-free, quarters, all right, two read, three deep, how many different ways do you need to beat that structure is, is to me the ultimate question and the thing that I always beat myself up about at the end of a season or, or after games, do I really need six ways to attack something and we're really only good at one of those but the other five make me feel better as a play caller because I know in my head those are good theories to attack that coverage or do we just go with one or two things that we absolutely love that our kids can execute and we know that if we get that structure those are our answers right? and I don't think there's a right or a wrong I don't think there's a, a uh, predetermined or predefined way to say you got to carry more, you got to carry less. At the end of the day, you got to figure out what makes you a better football team. 
But it is a good question, and I pose that question to you out there. If you are a defense, uh, an offensive coordinator, sorry, or you are a play caller, what would you rather have? Would you rather have five or six things that beat quarters coverage, or would you rather have one or two things that beat quarters coverage that your kids you feel like can execute at a high level, as opposed to five or six things that they really don't execute well at all? All right, do you want to be jack of all trades, master of none? All right, or would you rather have, you know, the old theory, all right, fear the man that has practiced one kick 10,000 times, not the, not the man that has practiced 10,000 kicks one time. All right, so we're all different. We all have different philosophies. We all have different mindsets and what makes us tick up top. So each of you as an offensive coordinator or a play caller, you are the only one that can answer that question. But I pose that question to you. Tell me what you think about the theory of taking the number of concepts you run and whittling it down to running one or two concepts that have the ability to be run out of multiple formations with multiple tags that keep the same concept but give you the ability to attack different structures on defense. All right, so leave me a comment in the comment section. Feel free all right, to tell me what you think. Would you rather have more concepts or less? One or two ways to attack and get good at it or five or six so you feel better as a play caller. Let me know what you think. As always, click that subscribe button. Turn your notifications on so you know when we do all right, every time we put out a video, thumbs up, thumbs down, whether you like it or you don't, all right, the interaction with the video is always good. If you don't like it, all right, feel free to put a thumbs down. It's your opinion. These videos are my opinion, so if you don't like something, by all means, put a thumbs down. Put a comment in there saying why you don't like it, all right? That's why we do the videos. That's what makes football such a great game. It's everybody's opinion. These are my opinions on how I want to do things, all right, with the program that I coach and the discussion whether it's positive or negative, as long as there's a discussion, people are getting something out of the video. Remember that we got our first Play Fast Football Clinic coming up January 24th, 25th, 26th, 2020, St. Augustine, Florida, right on the beach uh, at the Embassy Suites. Go to the website www.playfastfbclinic.com. That's www.playfastfbclinic.com. All right, so that you can register for the clinic. You can get a room at the Embassy Suites. Four people in a room. Uh, made to order breakfast every night that you're there, two, uh, two hour happy hour every night that you're there. We provide a happy hour Friday, we provide a lunch Saturday. Going to be an awesome clinic right on the beach in January in St. Augustine. Don't miss it. Make sure you go to the website and check it out. All right, as always, I appreciate everything you guys do for me and have done for the last seven years. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll see you guys next time.